space for that. So <laughs> I'm like, let me just play. I want to just play with outfits and such. I'm here for all of the playful. You look gorgeous, Haley. No, full stop. Absolutely Thank you. beautiful. So this, beautiful. Is your, this is your moment. Um, Haley, I'm so excited to talk to you. I talked to you briefly during the um, Power Press Day. Uh, really briefly, I was like, okay, I won't spoil it. I won't go into too much. But you've been busy, but in the absolute best way, right? Um, before we dive into all things power and respect, I have to ask you, um, before the TV and film projects, you actually got your start on Broadway. Um, you were nominated for a Tony Award for your role in Once on This Island. Talk to us a little bit about that transition from stage to now, I mean, big budget films. We're not talking about little films. We're not talking about little <laughs> TV shows. We're talking about the top of the line. Talk to us about that transition and how you've been able to navigate and handle it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a really, uh, I feel so blessed. Um, I keep I keep saying that that's been a common denominator in every conversation that I've had so far but it's so funny I always thought of myself as a theater actress and I always thought of myself as a stage performer because I love to sing right and and I love to be on stage and so when Once on this Island was closing and initially I actually booked my first TV show before the show closed um, and I remember, I was so scared, but I got to work with legends like Frankie Faison and Lorraine Toussaint. And it was such a seamless transition, actually. And, and I was like, oh, okay, instead of people, I got cameras in my face and I got people doing my makeup. And I feel so cute. Right. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a really nice transition for me. Definitely. Def well, you've done it and you make it look seamless. Um, okay. Let's dive into all things jukebox because, honey, you are you blew me out the water. The first two episodes, I had the pleasure of uh, previewing, and you guys just you in particular. I wasn't expecting it. I mean, not that I wasn't expecting you to deliver as you do, but I mean, you give us jukebox in a different way than what we, you know, are accustomed to seeing what we saw in the original Power. So um, it was originally played by Anika Noni Rose. Um, and in the prequel, you play a younger version of her. Talk to us. Had you watched, had you even been a fan of Power before joining this cast? Yes. I have, I watched Power. I, I, I wasn't, I can't say that I was a diehard day one Power fan. Right. Um, honestly, because I was a little bit too young. But the last few seasons, I was, I was there. And um, I'm also, I, I think I told you this in my other interview that I know that I'm Princess Tiana. Like, I, I know I was her in another life. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a huge Anika Nani Rose fan. So anything that she does, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to support her. I'm going to cheer for her. So when this audition came into my inbox, um, I, was, I was super excited. Wow. The casting couldn't have been more perfect. I mean... We see Anika in the older version and you in the younger version. Jukebox, how would you describe her? I say she's this tough, I mean, the voice. Oh, my God. I have to, I have so many questions about it. <laughs> how would you describe the younger version of Jukebox? Who is she? She is a young hustler. I, I, I keep saying she's a gangster with heart because, yeah. you know, she's got... She's got all of the the smarts and, and the knowledge from her Aunt Rock. Mm -hmm. And um, she's got this wittiness and this talent and this light that I don't think she knows. She doesn't know what to do with it. Right. Um, and, and that's <laughs> to be a young Black woman surviving in Queens in 1991 to have a gift. It, it, it can be a dangerous thing. And that's hard. I think that's, that's hard for people to wrap their heads around now. Cause now it's like, I got a talent. I could put it on Instagram or Twitter or TikTok or whatever. Right. But back then, especially, you know, if you were in the project, especially if you're the niece of a queen pin right. and you're smart and you're talented and you're super sweet and super thoughtful, that, that's, that's dangerous. It's very yeah. dangerous. So she's just trying to navigate her way through everything. She's, she's Kanan's cousin. She yeah. tries to, it's so funny, you know, 
Uh, I worked with Katina Miller, who plays uh, Raquel Thomas, uh, Mm -hmm. before we did Power. Right. And I was so in awe of her and I was so inspired by her. So when it came time, you know, Jukebox is just a mini rock. Basically, I I was like, oh, we we don't have to do very much acting there because because Patina is someone who I genuinely look to. And it's like, oh, my gosh, like I want to be like that when I grow up. We all do. We all are bound. <laughs> How about to the chocolate queens, the beautiful chocolate queens that are B. Can I get an A? Baby. Like, yes. And more yes. Okay. I'm yes. here for it. I'm so here for it. So, Haley, did you watch, did you go back and like watch Anika and like study her? I know you said um, Jukebox, the younger version, is like uh, a little Raquel, rock. But did you go back and look at like um, Anika's mannerisms in the original? What? How did you connect with her? What was it that you watched or saw fit or saw that connected you to your character? Yeah, I I watched some of the jukebox scenes, especially mm-hmm. the ones that had a lot of information um, that pertains to her relationship with Kanan. Yeah. But I tried to actually avoid it. I, I, you know, this is an origin story. And so what I didn't want was I didn't want to go in and and just copy everything that she does or or, or try to be scary or try to come in too intense. Um, Because my job is to bridge the gap between who the power fans know and and this, this young light. Like, I I think low key jukebox is a light worker because she, she, she has this natural curiosity and this natural born leadership Mm -hmm. and this wanting to, you know, whoever she becomes friends with, whoever she falls in love with, whoever she works with, she wants to make sure that everybody is top tier. Right. Cause Judy is top tier. Like she, she doesn't play. And so, and so, (laughs) um, you know, it's, God, it's, I want it to be like Anika's performance, but I also, one, I want to make it my own. And two, it's like, it's exciting because I I, I wanted to throw the power fans off a little bit <laughs> from who they know, you know? Girl, we are thrown out. I'm thrown, I was thrown out because again, I wasn't <laughs> expecting what you gave. It's so, it's so different yet. Like, you get to see, like, okay, well, that's how we got to where we are. You know, you, like, you introduce us to why she became what she became. And you do it so flawlessly. Um, Jewbox in this voice. Sister. Girl, Maybe. It's a gift from God, that voice. Um, people are going to be blown away when they watch you in this series. I just know for a fact. So get ready for your Twitter. You ready? You got your Instagram, your Twitter. Ready to go? Because they're going to blow you up. I mean, I guess. Kylie, prepare yourself. Talk to us about the singing. Did you record in a studio? or um, What was that process like for you? Talk to us about, because there's this Whitney moment. I'm not going to call it for people. But talk to us about the singing, how you prepared for it. Yeah, I mean... I knew I was going to sing in the show. Um, and it's so funny because we were in the middle of filming episode one. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, you're going to be singing this, 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 and this. Wow. Um, and so I got to go into the studio with actually a dear friend of mine, Adam Blackstone. Um, okay. And so we got to do a few, you get to hear Jukebox sing, sing quite a bit. Um, and in and, and different styles, she sings Whitney, obviously, which I was like, holy Girl. Word. Y'all are gonna have me coming out the gate. Out the gate. With I was ready. People are gonna be floored. I said, Lord, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I did good. I'm excited because I got to I got to have a hand in my vocal production, which is rare, I think, especially coming from like Broadway people in the hip-hop R&B world, they get nervous because they're like, but I was like, no, I got this. I know what I'm doing. So there's a song that I actually completely did my um, vocals by myself in my closet. So yeah, it was, it's been really fun. And you know, I'm, I've been working on my own music for quite some time. So I'm excited to kind of show people this new side 
and me for sure. Wow, I mean, a new album coming? Maybe. Drop us an exclusive, hey. Give us something. No, I mean, I've been recording. I mean, I've been writing for since I was a little kid. I would, I, I wrote poems and and lyrics that were terrible. Right. Um, but as I got older, and you know, you fall in love, and I was like, oh. and I went through my first heartbreak, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> um, and so I really just started writing and recording. And Adam Blackstone again has been like such. A blessing because you know we we saw each other so frequently that it's like baby girl like get into the studio what are you doing you know and it feels like juke it, uh, honestly because it's like everybody's telling her you've got this gift uh, you know go use it and so I do relate to her in that in that sense because I for so long I didn't like my voice and for a long time I I sang the way that other people wanted me to sing mm. and so now I get to sing as myself <laughs> and I love it wow that I can't believe you didn't like your voice it's I so did. you've been singing <laughs> since you were like before you could talk I've, I've followed you for quite a while you've been singing for quite some time um how lucky are you Haley that you get to have a career so you come from Broadway, but now you're starring in this two two big projects coming up. Um, but this show in particular, where you get to not only act and bring your art, you know, through acting, but through singing through your other big gift. How how does that feel for you as um, an artist, as an actor, a performer? How does that feel for you? Uh, I feel so grateful. Um... It, it always, you know, they always bring in music for jukebox or a, a singing moment mm -hmm. um, when she's in a very vulnerable state. I, 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 God, I had to irritate my showrunner so bad. I had to irritate Sasha so bad um, because I, I, I never wanted anything to feel like, and now we're singing. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm in this, we're, we're doing this, you know, family drama and it's super intense and now she's going to sing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's very Broadway. <laughs> so the, the way that they've written it so beautifully that I can just really sink into these honest moments, it helps me as an actor, as a storyteller when I'm telling Jukebox's story because it's really when we're going into her head, which for a lot of musicians, like that's real life. Right. Our music is what's happening in here. We might not be able to say it. We might not be able to talk it, you right. know, very well. But when we sing it, it's there. So I'm so happy I get to sing. Oh, my gosh. We're so happy. Talk to us because you just mentioned about the vulnerability of the character Jukebox. Because as tough as she is, she is also very vulnerable. There's an innocence at play with her. Um, she's navigating a lot. Um this is also, I believe, a coming of age story for Jukebox, too, as well as it is for a younger Canaan. Um, what did you remember about your childhood growing up that helped you to tap into what Jukebox was navigating and experiencing in the series? Um, I mean, the biggest thing for me that it, it actually took us getting to, like, episode four or five. Mm -hmm. Um, that I was like, oh, is um, I'm adopted. Um, and I was raised by two white parents in Oregon. Right. Um, and when I was growing up, there were not many people who looked like me, um, you know, in school and in my extracurricular activities. And so I, I also knew my biological family and life for them was much different than life for me. Right. In certain elements and then in not in other elements. And so where I connect with jukebox is like, I know that feeling of like having to tote the line between one lifestyle and one life and one set of family expectations. And then there's another set of expectations and another side of you that, that people say that's the right side, that's the right, <laughs> the right way. Uh, so I really, I really connected to her on that. And I actually, it helped me navigate some personal stuff, um, if I'm completely honest, that I had never thought about before. Wow, that's really beautiful. Um, set in the 90s, 
you give us fashion. <laughs> Y'all are giving, baby, giving baby, us. Jukebox gives you polo, okay? She gives us polo. She gives us oversized before we knew we wanted to oversize. Hello. All right. I'm here for right. it. I am here for it. How important was it when you put on those clothes? How did that help you transform and really dive into Jukebox? Thank God for Segay. Thank God for Fred. <laughs> Um, our, our, our wonderful costume department heads. Mm -hmm. um, it was so, I, when it came to creating Jukebox and navigating her sexuality and who she was, is she comfortable with her body? Is she not? Right. Where does she, you know, especially when she's grown up, you know, in a household that, that she sees this beautiful, illustrious, strong, sexy, you know, fearless woman. Um, those outfits it's so like yes that was the 90s that's just what people wore in the 90s right but also for juke it 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 tells a story about so much of her exterior which is like so hidden mm -hmm. mm, and, yes and baby i'll tell you what did it for me what that wardrobe trailer every day it was the tims there's a scene i'm not gonna give it away but it is the scene where it's just it focuses right on you guys' shoes as y'all are walking up. <laughs> I was like, yes, okay, I'm here for it. Yeah, it's it, and, and that's all, oh my God, those were the only shoes I wore. And and <laughs> it's so funny, whenever I got an alternative for shoes, I, I, I always go to the Tims. I still go to the Tims, so. Oh, oh, they've announced we have a season two now, so yeah, I can actually say it. Too. I can actually say it. Like, in my season two fitting for outfits, I, I kept I kept resorting to the, to the Tims. I was like, I can wear the Air Force ones are cool. The Reeboks are cool. No, but I don't wear the Tims. So. The Tims definitely put the viewers and put, I know I was in the vibe. I felt like I was walking down the block with y'all in the 90s. And South <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm here for this. And uh, look, congratulations on a season two before it even comes out. That's how you guys know what you guys did was really special. Kaylee, I want to ask you, you and Makai, who plays the younger Kanan, um, your cousin, y'all have such a best friend. You guys are like cousin, best friend. He's your keeper of secrets. You are his fierce protector. Talk to us about that relationship dynamic. Did you guys spend time offset connecting? I know you guys had downtime because of the pandemic. How right. did you guys develop this chemistry that we see play out on screen? Man, don't tell Makai <laughs> this. Do not tell Makai this. Okay. He is like a brother to me. Mm -hmm. I think he is so smart and so talented and so wise and so instinctual with her with his choices on set. And um it didn't take much. It didn't take much for us to really kind of lock in. Right. Um, which is good. I was worried. You know, you never know when you start a new project. You never know what a personality is going to be like. Work ethic. Yeah. Like we, it really felt like we were both challenging each other. Like, and, and throughout the season, they, they start going through some real shit. And, you know, I don't think we had a choice <laughs> when it came to being vulnerable and honest with each other right. and i also just love him and we hung out like and we would like facetime after table reads and you know debriefing yeah. i just i i adore Mikai. and you know yes he's canaan and yes he's young 50 and, and da, 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 da. Right. he's a wonderful wonderful like there's no ego i don't even think Mikai knows how talented he is wow Makai, if you're watching this, you didn't hear anything I just said. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, for real, like Makai is the real deal. And I feel so blessed that I get to work with him. Wow, that's really, that's beautiful. I love to, I love to hear it. That's so good. Okay, mm -hmm. Haley. We have to, we can't, you know, we have to look. I think the cool, one of the coolest elements I remember thinking about is like, we as actors, especially black actors, mm -hmm. where there isn't a lot of space. There's more space being created for us and we're really creating our own tables and creating our own rooms at this point as well. You know, you know, when you meet someone and you get to be in a room with someone that is just so warm and so genuine, it's, it, it, it shouldn't be taken lightly. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Are you so poetic? Come on now. <laughs> yes. Okay. Haley, as the premiere approaches, you know, everybody, what was once your baby and, you know, everybody on set, it's going to be the liberty given to the world. As the premiere pro approaches, what are you hoping that viewers feel from episode one? And also talk to us about how it will be different from what we've seen before. I mean, it's the origin story, man. Like we're starting day one. You've met so many, I, I call them all like, like the royal family. So like the Thomases are the royal family and the Tejadas are the royal family, you know? Um, and it's, oh God. It's so hard to put into words because Raising Canaan is so, it's in the power verse, but it's also like nothing you've seen before. Right. That makes sense. So I'm just so excited for people to just step into a new world. You know, there are things that people think they may know and, and you know, they might have their expectations and um, their theories or whatever, but I don't know. You got to just take the journey with us. <laughs> Um, and you'll see, we'll see. Okay, be coy all you want. <laughs> the journey, guys. You guys, get ready for a wild journey. Um, I know people are ready, and girl, just be ready. Have the Twitter notifications either off or on. Oh, Lord, be I'm turning them off, child. <gasps> mm, okay. No, not even in that, like, in just like a it's, a, it's a humility thing. I think, I think it's really easy, you know. Well, it could, you know, it could go both ways, but I think it's really easy to be like, I'm the shit and everything's the shit and every, uh, my shit don't stick. Uh, 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 uh. And, you know, I, I want to just like, you know, I don't want to do any fancy parties. I don't want to do anything like that. I just want to sit with my family and watch the show. So I hope, you know, I know everybody's going to be able to just gather everyone on the couch, make some popcorn, get some wine. Have the wine ready. And so yeah. your family hasn't seen it? They haven't gotten a sneak peek. Oh, okay. Let me tell you something about me and Drew Bucks. Secrets, we keep them, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Until they need to be revealed, baby. You okay. say, I'm here for it. I'm here. I am all the way here for it. Well, I know people are gonna be, I can't wait. I probably will send you a DM and say, girl, how's it going? I'm premiered. <laughs> are you okay? Are you are you okay? Are you breathing? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I don't know what to do. I'm so excited. You should be excited. You are such a blessed girl, but not only that, you're talented. You deliver. So you should really be proud to, like, go ahead and pat yourself on the back. Give yourself flowers for what you gave us. And I've only seen two episodes. And what you gave us in those two, go ahead and clap. Round of applause for Haley. Thank you. Thank you you do the thing on things. So shout out to you. Thank um, you. moving along to your next project before I let you go. Um, respect, girl. Hey, baby. <laughs> she was busy. You <laughs> and busy, but in the best way. I love to hear. I love to see this. Yeah. Respect was supposed to be released last year, um, but oh. due to COVID, how was that waiting for? Because I talked to you. I don't know if you remember last year, but at the beginning of the pandemic, in my house, I was locked in my house. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, you were on the floor. You were so cute. You had your little vibe situation going. But you guys had to wait for the movie to come out like a whole year. How was that? When did you guys wrap production on Respect? Oh, Lord. We wrapped a week before Raising Canaan started. So February of 2019. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. And um, we started in October. That's when we started. And yeah, it, it's so crazy that I, I, I've gotten to see it. I feel very blessed that I've actually seen it, and I'm so excited for everybody else to see it. Yeah. Um, but that was a that was a completely different experience um, and a completely different learning experience. But I had so much fun. I had so much fun. I was in Atlanta. You know, we're singing Aretha. Franklin, baby. I, we get to show a lot of her backstory. You know, everybody loves Aretha Franklin and everybody knows her, but her family had such a big hand in her life. 
Um, so to be able to be the youngest sister, um, it was so fun. I really felt like I was the youngest sister with Jennifer and Taekwon. I really did. Like, I was really the youngest. I mean, I was the youngest by, like, a lot because I was 19, 20. Right. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm so excited for everybody to see it oh my gosh like I, I remember you know we prepped ourselves for it to come out during the pandemic mm-hmm. so it's like okay we'll do a little pandemic moment and then they said mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> not so bad <laughs> it was a good call. that was a good call um so yeah I'm excited for people to also see a different a completely different <laughs> version of me right um, I felt like I feel like um what's it called is what? it called shapeshifter mm-hmm. it yeah and it's like like turning into like 800 other things and then I'm doing another show after power and I'll be a completely different person after that so it's 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 really fun like I love I love doing that girl you better work and (laughs) play at the same time (laughs) look good night that's all like you are you you working you're a working successful actress Talk to us about your character, though, in respect. You play Carolyn, uh, Carolyn, I believe, right? Her younger sister. How involved was she in the process with Aretha? Give us a little sneak peek, if you will. Yeah, Carolyn Franklin was the baby um, mm-hmm. of the family. She, you know, she she held two main positions. She was choreographer, mm-hmm. background singer, dancer. But then she was also one of Aretha's writers, one of her main writers. She wrote Ain't No Way, m- most popular. She wrote Ain't No Way. But she also helped arrange respect, uh, never loved a man, like all of these incredible songs that Aretha sang. And she was such a poetic young woman you know she she passed away at a very young age right um and so it's almost it gives me goosebumps to think about how in tune she was with the world and 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 with her emotions Mm -hmm. um especially growing up in the 50s and 60s um and in in the environment that they grew up in um, I definitely think writing was her saving grace. Right. And Aretha's voice was her, like, Aretha amplified everything that Carolyn ever felt. Wow. Um, so there's that. And then she's, she's also just a little sister. I mean, you know, just... <laughs> She was very blunt. She was like, she was real blunt. And um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, it's so weird. I'm adopted. I'm a big sister, but I'm also the middle child. Right. I'm also, sister, but I'm also the middle child. <laughs> but yeah, she is a, a little firecracker. And I, I really hope I did her justice. She really, not a lot of people know about her and about her brilliance. So yeah. I felt a lot of pressure <laughs> to do her justice. So I hope. I hope that I did. I'm sure you did. I have no doubt that you did. I'm so excited for you. All the things you have coming out. You are killing it. I'm I'm so, so proud. I'm like a big sister. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yes, go, Haley. What's next? I mean, not that you need anything next. You really could take a break after your premiere for respect. You can like say, okay, I'm chilling out. What do you have coming up next, busy lady? I know that's I, I don't stop. I, I never stop. Um, I know that's I right. That way. Um, no, I've got a few things, you know, like I said, I've been working on my music. Um, yes. <laughs> finally, we'll be releasing, <laughs> you know, the show and the film. We're filming. I've got uh, another show um, coming up that I can't quite talk about yet, but I'm okay. super excited about it. It's a completely different role that, as a young Black woman, I'm so excited to be able to to fill these shoes so wow. it's gonna be <laughs> a crazy year I don't get to I don't really stop until next June so I, I feel very 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 blessed you know to be in this position to be able to say you know that I get to be able to work you know not just as an actor and an artist but as a person a lot of people lost their jobs a lot of yeah. people lost their livelihood a lot of people are now doing jobs that they don't really care for but they have to because they have to survive so I feel really, 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 really blessed. And I, I don't like to say I'm lucky. You're blessed. I'm not <laughs> lucky. I'm blessed. Yes. Bars too? You can read too? Baby. Wow. It's so funny. Yeah, it's so funny. As I look back at my career, I started doing this when I was nine years old and really only just 
just now, you know, is everything popping off for me. So I'm just a good man. And, and the pandemic really helped me with just taking a step back and being like, no, you can, you can hustle, but you can also enjoy, you know, you can also enjoy what you're doing. So mm -hmm. I'm just excited. That's such a blessing. What advice would you give, Haley, to young girls wanting to follow in your footsteps that are wanting to, you know, they sing, they act, they dance, they're, you know, a triple threat like yourself. What advice would you give them on getting started in carving out a space for themselves in entertainment? Um, when I was in elementary school, <laughs> I had a PE teacher uh, Mr. Amy, and he really believed in me. I ran track. I wanted to run track, and he could see it. Mm -hmm. And um, so he had this thing that he told all of us, and, and he would pull me to the side and tell me all the time, I can do it. I will do it. And I think that holds true to me today. Like, I tell myself that in the hardest of times and in the best of times, you know, just know that you can do whatever you put your mind to. Right. And at the same time, just do you. I think this is a very fast-paced world. And I think a lot of a lot of society runs off of a very specific energy right now. And I would say just stay true to yourself, be you, do you, and mm -hmm. um, keep your head down and do the work. Yeah. You have to do the work. We're in a very result driven, you know. Right. And when it comes to art, you know. It, it's not something that you're always gonna get an immediate result. I right. started, like I said, I started doing this when I was nine years old and I didn't start working. I'm, I'm lucky enough that I got, I started working at 18. You know, there are people that wait until they're 40. Yes, yeah. You know what I mean? So just keep doing the work. Don't worry about what this person's doing or what this person said or what that person looks like or what they're doing, you know, just, just do, do you, and you can do it, and you will do it. And you are, my dear, look, give that good advice. You, you know what? Haley, I know your parents are proud of you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so like, you. Like your, your path, because you did start young, but you have been, look what you're doing, and you're doing it with grace. You're not ego-driven at all. Oh, baby, you're I can't not about you don't have time. <laughs> I don't know how people have the energy to be like, oh, yeah, it's whatever. Like, right. I don't you know how you do it. That takes a lot of energy. But it's trial and error because I think there was a time I got to learn young that, you know, you're only as good as your last performance. So so you can treat people. Look, baby, I'm still working my way up, you know. And so I still, I still even walk into rooms where I'm not wanted or welcome. And I just like to be that light. I've decided, you know. I'm, I'm here to just be and, and have fun and, you know, I don't know how I went off on that tangent, but we don't have time for egos. That's the whole point. We don't. How, how, how do you navigate? How have you navigated that space where you walk into rooms or people, because even as successful as you are, you know, people still, you know, look at you yeah. or how have you been able to navigate that? Yeah. And what I do think, you do? I think what I learned, it's, it, like I said, it's trial and error. And mm -hmm. so, so when I started, um, you know, I, I had the like youngster, like my shit don't stink. Like I'm so great thing. Right. And then I had the completely lost all self-worth and, and I wouldn't speak to people. I wouldn't say my opinion. I wouldn't speak up for myself. I wouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, and then I'm now I'm still working on it, but I'm in a place now where, um, you know, I just like to show up. I like to show up and I like to give my input and I like to learn and ask questions and laugh and joke. And, you know, sometimes that's not the vibe for everybody else. Right. So the thing that I tell myself is one, it's okay. And, 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 you know, it's, it's not all about you. Um, first right. of all, <laughs> actors, man, we are so, <laughs> um, 
you know, it's not all about you and right. and you don't know where someone's come from. They don't know where you've come from. Right. So, you know, I'm in this place now of like, I'm here, I've arrived, not in like a, I'm here, I've arrived just like I'm here, you know, and um, whoever wants to take the journey with me, they're for me. And if they're not, then, and that's okay, let it be. And like I said, you just have to let the work speak for itself. So, you know, I try not to get too wrapped up in all the other stuff. Do you have mentors that kind of help you? In the, okay. Yeah, I'm blessed. I mean, my main mentor is Rodney Hicks, who he is like, he's done it all, baby. He's done TV, Broadway, film. Right. Tours, like, so he's, he's like my heart. Um, and I've gotten to work, like I said, I've gotten to work with so many iconic artists, uh, Merle Dandridge, uh, Philip Boykin. I love Philip Boykin. I, I, I had the most life-changing conversation with Cicely Tyson a few years before she passed. And, and that really, I, I remember, I'll never forget those moments that I got to have with her. She came to Once on this Island and she sat me down and she held my hand and um, she said, this is your anointing. Wow. And you're meant to be here for a young black girl um, who at the time just did not think she deserved or was supposed to be, you know, where she, where she was. Dear Cicely Tyson, man. I, just, I have chills. Yeah, it, it was, um, uh, it was not something that I took lightly. I'm so glad that I didn't because I was, ooh, if I was my mama, I would slap me. Um, <laughs> if I didn't take Cicely Tyson seriously. Right. But yeah, I've just had so many people, even if it's for a short period of time or years, you know, mm -hmm. I just try to be a filter and I try to absorb as much as I can and then take bits and pieces and add it to my process and, and my energy. So, mm. yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would people be surprised to learn or know about Haley Kilgore? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I love to cook. I love to bake. Like I said, okay, I'm good. Um, <laughs> what else? Like I don't know. I'm very quiet. It, it's interesting. Like when people meet me, I'm I'm not very loud. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm goofy. I'm silly, but I kind of keep to myself because I never, I can never like say the right words and I'm so awkward and shy, but, um, but I'm an introverted extrovert. So like I can party, I'll turn up if I need to, but like right. I, I usually keep to myself. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I'm regular. I'm not, I'm not out here trying to I'm regular. There ain't nothing exciting about me, man. Girl, regular with a big movie coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and a, a, about Aretha Franklin, of all people, playing her sister. Ooh. Okay, regular. And a new series coming out on Sunday that people are going to be blown away by. Okay, regular. Regular, regular. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what you want to call it. I'll be regular any day then. I'll say, I'll say this. I'll say this. I'm me. High five, sis. High five. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Amy, I'm so proud of you. This is so good. Look, you got a big sister and a cheerleader in me. So I got your back and I cannot wait. I'm going to hit you up on Sunday and check in. Amazing. So just respond back to me because I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm going to be like, they're going to flood your DM because you kill it. And I'm so proud so, and excited. Oh, yeah. Where is the buzz? You said we used to be the same.